your family who you live with has leukemia and has been given a certain number of months to live. Um, imagine yourself in either or both of those situations. I'm suggesting there's four things you can do, and those are common to both situations, and they've all got a name. The first one is what I call working for. In other words, you see a problem and you set out to fix it. With a homeless person, you set up a charity for homeless people. With the person you know well, you go and scour the internet for answers, you get hold of all the doctors you've heard of to find cures and all that kind of thing. The second one is what I call working with. With the homeless person, that means setting up uh, an organization that involves council members from the city, involves business, involves uh, churches, involves all sorts of organizations, what's called community organizing. Uh, for uh, the person on your street, it probably means getting a whole bunch of people on your street and all the family and friends maybe to do a special last birthday party where everyone gets together or something like that. Uh, the third one is called being with, where you, in the case of the homeless person, sit down, have a cup of tea, uh, talk about how soon um, we should open up after uh, lockdown uh, and, and who's going to win the Premier League or um, the equivalent in Italy. The, third one, the fourth one is what I call being four. Um, and being four is where you, you set up a blog site and you tell the whole world uh, how it should sort out homelessness and what language it should use. Um, or in, a, in, in the case of um, your family situation, you, you go on the internet and you make sure that all the causes that your loved one cares about uh, are going to be advanced after their death. So I think of those as, as being like in a square, a bit like I've got in front of what I'm looking at right now, and you're all looking at a sort of a, a lattice. Um, so two of them are for, two of them are with, being for, being with, working with, and working for. Now, what I want you to, to perceive with me is that working for is the fundamental way in which our modern Western society sets itself against problems. Um, dentists, doctors, lawyers, all the professions assume that you have a problem and I'm going to fix it for you and you're going to pay me a packet of money for doing it. The trouble is that model doesn't work for many of the most significant things in society. In my view, it doesn't work for homelessness and it doesn't work for your family member with leukemia. Um, however, if you've seen a film like uh, My Sister's Keeper, you'll know that that film is all about how the mother becomes obsessed with working for her dying daughter, but doesn't actually spend any time being with her. Um, what working for and working with have in common is that they set all the issues of the world up as having a problem and having a solution. But the, the thing about life is that more than half of life doesn't work like that. It isn't about fixing problems and finding solutions. It's about learning to stay with the uncertainty and the pain. And that's never been more true than it is in the face of the coronavirus, where there isn't a simple problem, we can just fix it. We have to find ways of staying with and finding the resources and the resilience and relationships. Uh, in order to keep us in this place. Now, what I next want you to see is that uh, when Jesus was among us, he divided his time in a very interesting way. You could say he spent a week in Jerusalem uh, working for us, saving us, if you like, dying for our sins, to use the traditional language. He spent, but that was just a week. He spent three years in Galilee working with us like a community organizer, building a social movement, empowering disciples, giving them skills, giving them teaching, giving them examples. But he, he spent 30 years in Nazareth being with us. So if you think about the percentages, it's 1% working for, which by the way is the one that we are completely obsessed by. It's 9% working with in Galilee, and it's 
being with us in Nazareth. Now, we may say, well, God had never done an incarnation before. You know, God was pretty inexperienced at incarnation. We know much better than God. We've done lots of incarnations. We, you know, we appreciate God didn't get it right the first time. Obviously got the percentages way out of sync. Not a terribly humble thing for a Christian to say, but it's kind of what we are saying by the way we orient our social engagement because we're obsessed with working for, we're obsessed with setting things up so there's a bunch of people who are a bunch of basket cases who are basically useless, and there was us who got all the answers. And so what we do is we become very well educated, like I'm sure everyone on this call, we go to college, we get a master's degree, and then we become very proficient at doing things for people. So what we're really saying is that God's percentages were completely the wrong way around. We do 90% working for, but God in Christ did 90% being with. So my suggestion to you is that being with is not only the way that we should found our social engagement, it's the fundamental way in which God relates to us. God doesn't fundamentally see us as a problem to be fixed, uh, as, a, as a difficult thing needing a solution. God, God fundamentally sees us uh, as, as the ones to be with. Being with is the heart of how the Trinity works, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Being with is fundamentally how the incarnation works, God, Jesus being with us. And if you just think about the words that, co that come up over and over again, again in the Bible, when two or three are gathered, I will be with them. The last words uh, that Jesus says, I will be with you always to the end of time. Uh, the word became flesh and was with us in John chapter one. It's just everywhere. Once you start looking out for this little word with, you realize it's the most important word in theology. Um, and I just, just want to f finish with just a, um, two or three of the most crucial ways in which being with really kicks in. Let, let me just give you one example. Uh, think about when you really like somebody, you say, you know, why not come over and maybe I'll make you dinner or something like that. And so you work really hard and you work for them and you make this great dinner and they're really impressed. If they come again, you say, why not come an hour or two earlier and we can cook together and you're into working with the first ones working for, of course. If you if that goes really well and you decide this person is someone you're going to be close to and you're going to hang out together a lot, the food actually doesn't really come into it. It's just about being with. And that's a, that's a sign of how we make a progression in relationships that can start off as a working for relationship and eventually become a being with relationship. And that being with relationship is the most precious thing in life. Just to give one other example, just keep to my 10 minutes. Um, think about how you relate to someone on their birthday. Uh, on, on, usually for 364 days of the year, we think about what, what someone can do for us. We think of them in their professional role. We think of how we can, in a sense, use them, um, how they can do something useful for us. On their birthday, we don't think about that. We think about how to enjoy them. Uh, we simply enjoy them for their own sake. We don't see their deficits, why they're no good at being useful. We only see their assets. What are the particular things that are unique to them, uh, that are precious and God-given? And it's that journey from deficit to asset, that journey from using to enjoying that we make on someone's birthday uh, that, that I think life is all about. It, ministry, what I'm engaged in, is about treating, ev treating everybody every day as if it's their birthday. They're unique. They're special. I'm longing to discover the uniqueness that God has to give me through them. That's how to be with somebody. Um, usually the world is dominated by working for relationships which are transactional they they commodify people they instrumentalize people as a means to some further end to believe in being with is to say there is no further end there is no place we're trying to get to beyond relationship life is about relationship and god fundamentally in the trinity is about relationship forever and i'll leave you with this thought Think about how we're going to spend forever. We're going to spend forever being with 
God with the renewed creation, with ourselves and with one another. There will be no problems to fix. There'll be no working for to do. Uh, and so if we're going to practice for living with God forever, we need to work out how to do that now. That's what I call living God's future now. And that's all about learning to be with.